Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Roussel, and welcome to the last video in the Sleep to Perform series sponsored by Technogel. Today we're going to talk about tips and tricks to help you get better and more restful sleep. So I have nine tips for you about how you can get better and more restful sleep. So let's start number one and we'll kind of go through and at the end of this maybe you're going to put all of them into play, maybe you'll just put one or two of them into play. Depends on how much and how good of your sleep. If you're a good sleeper, maybe you only need one or two of these to really get things going. But a lot of people have a lot of trouble sleeping and so I recommend that you take all nine of these and put them all into play and see how well you're going to be able to fall asleep more effectively and then also stay asleep at night. So tip number one is to have a routine to tip your body off so they know it's time to sleep. You know, one of the best things that you can do is build in a sleep routine. And that way your body's going to know, especially if you want someone who has trouble sleeping at night, some, letting your body know that, you know what, it's winding down, the day's winding down, and now I'm getting ready to sleep. And so having a specific routine, you know, whether it's, it's turning off the TV, it's having a cup of peppermint tea, it's reading for 20 minutes and then turning the lights out and going to sleep. Whatever it is, develop your own pre-bed ritual, your kind of pre-sleep ritual to let your body know that it's time to go to bed. So tip number two is to avoid alcohol. So while alcohol is a depressant and can make you sleepy, alcohol is going to negatively impact your ability to uh, enjoy and, and maximize your deep sleep. So it is a depressant, but it's also, it doesn't allow you to have the most restful sleep. So this has been shown in research. It's actually, you know, I've noticed it myself, you know, we talked about in uh, some of the previous videos how you can use devices to actually track your sleep and track the effectiveness of your sleep. And I can tell you if there's one thing that negatively impacts sleep and then also heart rate variability, which is another marker that you can use to see if you're fully recovered and are ready to exercise again that having one or two drinks at night is consistently, you know, the biggest impact, uh, the biggest factor in those things. So if you're having trouble getting enough restful sleep, you definitely want to cut out your alcohol. Tip number three is to make sure your room is really dark. So nowadays there can be lots of lights lighting up your room at night. So whether it's street lights and you need to get darker curtains, or maybe it's your cable box. You know, we recently moved a different cable box, <clears throat> excuse me, into our bedroom and it has all these blue lights and it drives me crazy at night. So making sure those lights are off, an alarm clock, those glowing lights from alarm clocks, or whatever it is, your phone keeps dinging and lighting up in the middle of the night, make sure your room is really dark and having a nice dark room can help you fall asleep faster and help you stay asleep because there are circuitry in your brain that recognizes darkness and uses that as a signal for sleep. So make sure you're sleeping in a dark room. The next tip is to disconnect early. You know, turn off the television, turn off your phone, shut off your computer. You know, a lot of times people when they have trouble going to sleep at night, and I hear this, you know, although what I do is nutrition with clients, we always talk about sleep because I really like to look at an integrated overall approach to health. And so sleep is a factor. And we talked about in a couple earlier earlier videos the impacts of sleep on weight loss. And so I'm talking about sleep with clients. A lot of the ones who have trouble sleeping, it always has to do with them having trouble shutting their minds off and not being able to disconnect. And if you're on your Blackberry or your iPhone, you know, while you're in bed, right before you turn the lights off, or even when the lights are already off, answering work emails, that's not going to help you relax. It's not going to help you tone down. So part of your pre-bed routine when you're kind of getting your body ready for sleep is going to be to turn off all those devices and really disconnect so you can start to relax and then get some sleep. The fifth tip is to relax with magnesium. So mineral magnesium is a relaxant, it's a muscle relaxant and it's used by lots of people very effectively to help them relax and to get more restful sleep. So you can take this via just a magnesium supplement or a lot of times with clients will use topical magnesium which is a gel or a cream that you just rub on your legs before you go to bed. It's a great way of getting magnesium into your system and specifically we'll use it you know, on your legs 
After a really hard workout, some topical magnesium before you go to bed can be just what you need to help improve your sleep and to help it be more restful. Tip six is going to be to avoid stimulants. So whether it's coffee or five hour energy or a Red Bull, whatever it is, pre-workout stimulants, if you train in the evening and you have trouble sleeping afterwards and you take a pre-workout stimulant, you don't want to take that out and see how that's going to help you get better sleep. You know, everyone has different sensitivities and tolerances to stimulants. You know, some people need to cut out coffee before noon, so no coffee after noon. Well, some people can get away with it around 4 o'clock. You know, whatever it is, it's, since it's very personal and individual, your response to stimulants, you know, figure out if it has to be noon or 4 o'clock or maybe 6 o'clock for you. But whatever it needs to be, cut out the stimulants so you don't have an additional artificial stimulus keeping you up at night when you're trying to fall asleep. The next tip is to stay cool. So research shows that the ideal temperature for sleeping is between 65 and 68 degrees. So this is a little chillier than most people might expect, but it has to do with the changes in your body that happen with the latter uh, stages of sleep cycles. But keeping your room cool and keeping your body cooler are going to allow you to better reap the benefits of deep sleep. And that's really the physically restorative sleep. You know, that's the sleep that most of us need a lot more of. And as you get older, you get less deep sleep. Your body just doesn't um, stay in deep sleep as long. So keep your room cooler to help maximize the amount of deep sleep that you're getting. Tip eight is to have a great bed. If you think about it, you spend you know, almost a third of your life in the bed that you're in. And most people have nicer TVs than they do beds. But, you know, having a nice bed, which is going to give you restful sleep, so you don't wake up sore and, you know, aching from, uh, you know, I do a lot of traveling, and there are a lot of hotel beds that are just horrible. And that's a great way to ruin a good night's sleep, is to sleep on a bad bed. Uh, you know, specifically, we talk about our sponsors for this series, Technogel. Those beds are amazing. I have a Technogel bed, and it is the best bed that I've slept in. And they have research showing that actually sleeping in their beds can improve the amount of REM sleep that you're getting. And, you know, the beds also have this gel technology, so it disperses heat. In the previous tip, we were talking about keeping cool. And, you know, if you're using something like a feather bed or a lot of uh, blankets and sheets, that can help keep in the heat, which is going to, you know, uh, be counter of what you're trying to do by keeping this cool room to help you sleep better. So the last tip is going to be stretch before you go to bed. Static stretching stimulates your, parasympath your parasympathetic nervous system. So your parasympathetic nervous system is the rest and digest. If you think your sympathetic is fight or flight, you know, those are kind of adrenaline and those sorts of hormones. The opposite side of that coin is your parasympathetic nervous system. And that's your rest and digest. And that's really promotes relaxation. So static stretching before you go to bed can help stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, promote relaxation, and help you get a better and easier night's sleep. So those are nine tips and tricks on how you can get better and more sleep. You know, so both duration and quality of your sleep are very important. And these nine things, along with all the other things we've talked about in this video series, have hopefully given you a lot more information about how you can get better sleep and then also the importance of sleep, whether it be for athletic performance, for maintaining a healthy weight, or so you can just think clearer and function better at work. So I'm Dr. Mike Russell. That's going to wrap it up for this video and also all the videos in the Sleep to Perform series sponsored by Technogel. Uh, thanks for watching all the videos. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also visit my blog at MikeRussell.com. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.